The next episode of The Commercial Break starts now. Oh, yeah, cats and kittens. Welcome back to The Commercial Break. I am Brian Green. This is my dear friend and beautiful co-host, Kristen Joy Hoadley. Best to you, Chrissy. Best to you, Brian. Best to you out there in the podcast universe. Chrissy and I, for months... I've been telling y'all, you got to get your 21 ejaculations per month in the door. You got to get it under in the wire, guys, that 30 day period. You can't do 21 in 45 days. You got to do 21 in 30 days. Yes. Or it reduces the effectiveness of what I don't know. Scientific- Hashtag prostate health. Hashtag prostate health, guys. You got to keep that prostate as small and tight as possible. Let's remember that. Do your kegels. Get 21 ejaculations in per month, and then you reduce your chances of prostate cancer. Not only have we gone so far as to make a sticker about it, but I firmly believe in the program. And while it may be inconvenient for the rest of my family (laughs) that I spend a little extra time in the shower, it's what they don't realize is that all I'm doing is securing my future as their father and their husband. Exactly. It's all for the children. I don't want you to secure the future. (laughs) Feel free to leave any time, Brian. <laughs> and my wife may have a different opinion about this, but I want to make sure I'm around for those kids, Chrissy. So when my Instagram is filled with bikini-clad babes, <laughs> it's not because I want to look at bikini-clad babes. I am not that kind of guy. What I need to do is stimulate myself in many different directions. Visually. Yes. Now, the question about where the, the promatozoa goes after you get done is a whole different Answer. It's a whole different problem. Most guys, I would imagine, are are throwing it into a tissue or a towel or down the yes. sink or in the drain. We don't need to get into all the specifics, even though I just did. What I would <laughs> what I would discourage people from doing is using this as an opportunity to get rid of your promatozoa on or around animals. That's all I gotta say. Jesus. Yes. Is that not let me uh, breaking news? <laughs> oh, God. Only Brian finds this. <laughs> <laughs> you nice. could imagine what my search history looks oh. like. I'm waiting for the FBI to come in the door. <laughs> Man captured injured seagull in alleyway and then pleasured himself on top of it. What? A man has admitted no. causing unnecessary suffering to a seagull after he captured it and pleasured himself while watching porn on his phone. David Lee... Let me, show you, let me show you David Lee's picture. Doesn't that look like the kind of guy who has probably masturbated on oh a pigeon God. or two? A uh, man has admitted causing unnecessary suffering to a seagull after he captured it and pleasured himself while watching porn on his phone. David Lee carried out the bewildering act in an alleyway in Sunderland. Those fucking people from Sunderland. What's up with you guys? <laughs> in the alleyway, yeah. too. In what, <laughs> what was described as one of the most unusual cases we've ever seen. The 40-year-old of Rocker Avenue, they point out where he lives. <laughs> Poor bastard. He's just trying to get his 21 EPMs in. Pleaded guilty to carrying out a sexual act involving a herring gull. <laughs> Honey, what is that this an actual? This is the craziest story I've heard. Is this My a God. law? Like, uh, They make it sound like this is what he's been actually charged with. A sexual act involving a herring gull. <laughs> 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 Very good, David. Very good. Nicely done. Uh, it is classified as an oh, it is classified as an offense under the Al- Animal Welfare it Act of two thousand six. Should be an offense. Well, let me point out that God. if this is a law that's on the books, it's because there was a problem with this at one point, and yes. someone said we need to make this illegal. People mm-hmm. cannot just go whacking off on top of seagulls all the time. We've got a big issue here in Sunderland. <laughs> isn't Sunderland where those the sexy seagulls? Isn't Sunderland where the the boy? No, 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 never mind. I, I was going to say uh, Ryan, what a Ron, Reynolds bought that soccer team. Oh no, I don't think so. Okay, all right, good. <laughs> Describing the video evidence seen in court, the video evidence around one a.m. The defendant was chasing a seagull down the road. <laughs> a second piece of footage sees the defendant chasing the same bird down a different road. In the third piece of footage, the defendant has a different bird in his hand. It is now a smaller bird. You can see the defendant with the bird in his arms, and he goes to a short space down the road. It is clear from the CCTV footage that defendant is masturbating. The defendant places the bird close to his groin and in between his legs and goes back to his phone to continue I the act. I can't even hear anymore. This is awful. fucked up. Man, David, bro, listen. Ugh. God damn, I hope he doesn't have the commercial break somewhere on his phone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they made me I, do it. Yeah. <laughs> I blame these fuckers. They told me to get my 21 EPMs per month. This is a horrifying story. And I know I'm laughing because... 
the visual it's feels funny to me. So incredible. But you don't go whacking off on top of a, any animal. Let's no. not whack off on any animal, any unsuspecting human beings either. Exactly. Let's keep our 21 EPMs to ourselves. To yourself. Listen. And your partner. Yeah. Yeah, and your partner. If you want to get it in with your partner, yeah. cool. Uh, let's keep... I'm going to put this on the treaty. Let's keep masturbating a <laughs> thing that we feel guilty about so we do it in private and quietly and we sneak around. Let's do that. <laughs> let's keep masturbating under the covers. Because clearly, we cannot be trusted to be out in public whacking off at any given time. No. If we're chasing three different birds <laughs> to get the one that you like... <laughs> Three different birds, Chrissy. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't even know how you let this man back into society after this. Well, I mean, he had a moment of weakness. He had a moment <laughs> of weakness and he whacked off on top of a bird. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Who amongst us I hasn't found a fine feathered friend? I don't want to be next to him and, oh, and no, know no, this no. information at any point. No, anytime. you didn't say sitting next to you. I don't want him sitting next to me either, but he should be somewhere. Let's point out that they did put his home full address. Home confinement. Home confinement. Mm. They did put his full address in the article, too, so the guy is the guy is most certainly going to be shunned. I no, by his I neighbors. have a feeling he doesn't care. I mean, if he's actually out there chasing seagulls in an alleyway and masturbating in full view of things, that I, I don't think he cares. Gives a whole new definition to the word big bird. That's for sure. Let me ask you a question. Like piggybacking, piggy fronting off this. Have you ever been caught in the act of masturbating? No, not caught. No? I mean, like someone popped in and you were like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you haven't ever had that experience? Mm -mm. I've had that experience multiple times. And I'm telling you right now, it's rather uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, there's, it, there's no other way to explain it. <laughs> I mean, if you get caught, caught with your pants down literally, there's only one thing to say. And that is, I was washing my dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just checking it, checking yeah, it out. Yeah, I got to get it fully erect so I can get all <laughs> the shaft. I got to clean all the shaft. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my, uh, my beautiful, lovely, wonderful uh, son is now, ex you know, finding out about the world of penises, oh, right? Oh, yeah. So the other day he was like, uh, Daddy, does your penis get big? And I was like, what? And he's like, does your penis get big? And I was like, you mean hard? And he's like, yeah, hard. And I'm like, yeah, not so much anymore. But back when I was a kid, <laughs> back when I was a youngster running around town, uh, you know, it, I couldn't help myself. That's the way it was. When you get caught masturbating, there, the best policy is honesty at that point. So that then... They, the person who caught you can leave and you can finish the job. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, if the you're person in the middle knows, of it. I'm sure, anyways, and should just shut the door again. Shut back the door. Nah, not your mom or your brothers. Or, you <laughs> well, know. your brothers oh probably my God. give you shit. But. <laughs> they hated me when I was a teenager. I'm about to tell some really, I'm about to spill the tea here. When I was a teenager, I got this, I got this name, Long Shower Brian, <laughs> because I would always take these long showers so long, in fact, that my dad had to start putting a timer That's on right. the shower. You did talk about that. Uh, because, you know, we had a, whatever, uh, 15 fucking people living in our house, however many children my dad had, 15 <laughs> fucking people living in our house, and we had the world's smallest water heater, right? So you would take a good seven-minute shower, and the cold water would already be there. Now you try and do that times four, plus my dad, in the morning, so five of us needing to take a shower. And I was always the last one to take a shower because everyone knew I was going to take the longest and I was going to use all the hot water. <laughs> so sometimes I would go in there and I'd just start that shower to cover up the noise of <laughs> masturbation and it would go on. I would be in there for 20, 30 minutes. 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> Let's go. You got to go to school. Not before I rub one out, Dad. <laughs> I'm cleaning my penis. <laughs> <laughs> and on a number of occasions, you know, you got to, first thing you do is you lock the doors. Yeah, that is step one. But my little brother, he figured out how to open the door with the credit card. You know what I'm saying? You slip in that card and you go pop. You just pop those little yeah, stupid those, ass those locks. little locks that mean nothing. Oh, yeah. And so he thought it was a, a great deal of fun that anytime the shower was taking a little extra long, he would run up and he'd pop the door <laughs> and then he'd just kick it open. And <laughs> <laughs> the bathroom was in the middle of the hallway, so anybody, I'd be like, "God damn it, cleaning my penis!" <laughs> oh, I bet he thought it was hilarious. Oh, he thought it was funny. My dad, not so much, but he thought it was funny. 
It's embarrassing. There's no two ways around it. I mean, you know, it's embarrassing, especially when you're that age and you're trying to explore and you go to Catholic school where they tell you every five minutes it's bad to look at your penis. And you right. know, if you touch it, it's going to set on fire and, you know, only do it <laughs> in the butt. Fire. Oh, my God. The crazy things they would teach you as, uh, in that Catholic school. Mm. They, they would like get d- d- sex education. Th- this guy who taught us sex education was not even a real teacher. He was like some parent that they brought in. <laughs> It was supposed to be taught by the coach, right? Right. And the coach conveniently decided that he didn't want to teach sex education. (laughs) So one of the parents stepped in. I'll never forget his name, Mr. Padilla. Mr. Padilla stepped in, and he was like a big, jovial Indian guy, right? And he was fun, and he was funny. But the way that he twisted himself up in a knot (laughs) to avoid saying anything that might be against the Catholic religion, it was just, it was like an art. It was like a dance that he was doing, and he was doing it so artfully until he came to the part about masturbation. It was in the book, but he wouldn't talk about it. He would – so, you know – and, of course, no one had any questions. No one would raise their hand and ask any questions. That's too embarrassing. So Mr. Padilla, I remember on the days when he was supposed to be talking about masturbation, it was in the book, self-pleasure and, you know, masturbation. I think it was more clinical than that. I was actually thinking it just said masturbation, right? <laughs> And he would, he would just be like, "That's awful that there's such shame around." Such it. shame. No, he wouldn't even. He he said, you know, he talked about self pleasuring and self love, but he said the words as if his tongue had needles sticking it through it. <laughs> when he was saying it, he would just be like, and then he he would move on. Self love. <laughs> so you felt always so guilty about this, and I remember one time I went to confession. And confession to me was a lot of fun because even though I knew the priest knew who I was probably by my voice, we were, but you know, you were behind this curtain. Uh And as I got into my teenage years, I understood what a holy crock of shit this was. And so I told him one time, I said, you know, I I did some cussing and, you know, I lied to my mom about taking the cookies and then, you know, (laughs) I've been masturbating. And he gave me the most heavy sentence, which is do the rosary. He gave me the most heavy sentence was reserved for my mas- masturbatory items. That is so terrible. It's That's what's terrible. so fucked up. Oh my God. It's crazy. People and their sexuality. I did not go to a Catholic school. Thank God. And my mom was very open talking about sex with all three of us girls. And so we, there was never any kind of shame around it, around sexuality. So, and So your mom like told you, she was, she was like, girls, you got to, well, I mean, it's... Make friends with your vagina. Yes. Get to know yourself. Oh, she say that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Take a mirror, look at it, get familiar, get figure out yourself. what feels good. Yeah. Yeah, that was the opposite of my experience. <laughs> my mom and dad, when we, when my brother and I were like 10 years old, I will never forget the most uncomfortable sex <laughs> conversation. I mean, they were all probably uncomfortable, the first one, for almost everybody, right? That's a difficult conversation, right. I'm sure, for a parent to have. And to have it at 10 years old. Then, now I'm going to have to have it when the kids are like four. I mean, yes. when, you know. <laughs> You're already having it with Matias. I know. <laughs> but my parents literally brought out this clinical book, and it was like the the art of sex, the joy of sex, the science of sex, or well, not the joy of sex, that's a tantra book, but the... <laughs> <laughs> no joy in sex around yeah. <laughs> here. <laughs> my dad threw down a copy of Debbie Does Dallas and says, figure it out. You're the one with the penis. <laughs> um. But I just remember they had this book, and it was all so clinical. These are boobs. This is a vagina. This is a penis. And But they never talked about masturbation. They never even brought it up as a subject, as a topic of conversation ever mm-hmm. in my growing up. So we had to figure this all out on our own, as I'm sure a lot of people do. I don't well, think most nothing, people, yeah, most people f- do figuring it out on their own. But it just uh, it just depends on how shameful you feel doing. It. Well, when you're just beaten into your head, that, you know, sex in general is just shameful. It's Jeez. reserved for marriage. I never bought into that shit. I think part of the reason why I started to disagree with the Catholic Church was their stance on premarital sex. I thought to myself, by the age of 14, I was like, I am so ready to have sex. I am so ready to do this. Yeah. And it was 1,000% against everything that we had been taught. And so I had to find pigeons to have sex with. <laughs> you had to. That's I had that, to do the that, Now this guy, this his perspective maybe takes another turn in it's, my head. It's making all the sense in the world. Mm-hmm. If he grew up in a house like mine, I can understand <laughs> where his wacky picadillos come from. <laughs> He's, he's probably a kid chasing pigeons around the beach with a boner and like, well, this feels good. 
<laughs> Are you into it? Because <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> uh, speaking of animals, do you remember months ago we covered a lady who acted like a cat 24 hours a day and she had just moved in with this with older guy, gentleman. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember this? Oh yeah. I cause it's not even I don't even think it'd be called cosplay because she's not dressing up in a costume all the time, but she's acting like a cat all the time. She's yes. living as a cat. Yes. Chrissy, kind of. D- wasn't she doing an interview though? She was doing an interview though. What do you mean doing an interview? Well she was like because it was, you know, they were interviewing the two of them. Yes, they were interviewing the two of them, but she said that 24 hours most a day, of the time, yeah, she, she was, was like a cat. a cat. Yeah. Yeah, she could break character, but yes. most of the time <laughs> she was meowing and eating her breakfast on the, on the, on out the of a table. bowl on the table with, like, with her yeah, little, little milk. With just her tongue. <laughs> it was a highly disturbing video, but hey, whatever you're into. Each of their cool. own, the yeah. guy seemed into it. Well, the guy seemed into the 20 year old girl <laughs> who, who was beautiful, who happened to be walking around yes. in cat lingerie all day long. And he, what, right. he was like 48 or something like that. He was much older than she was. I have found a brother to that sister. Oh. And I mean the, and I mean the content, not the yeah. actual <laughs> okay, human yeah. being. What I found was a woman who loves to pretend she's a dog and the boyfriend who loves her for it. You want to check this out? I think we should. Without further ado, I was trolling on the internet. As you do. As I do do. As you do do. And I found the dog version of the cat lady that we reviewed. <laughs> Here we go. Let's dog take a listen. Lady. Dog lady. Here we go. This is Lorenzo. He fell in love with Jenna. I think my favorite thing about Jenna is her ability just to embrace who she is as a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> is right. He loved, The best thing that he loves about her is her ability to embrace herself as a puppy. That's what he loves. Well, listen, everyone's into something. <laughs> At least he's not even a pigeon fucking. Yes. Puppy play is extremely important in my relationship. That's where a lot of like my, my love languages lie. Despite living a puppy dream, this canine couple have had to deal with some harsh judgment. I definitely... <laughs> Every time I go outside to take a poo, my neighbours say, get off the lawn! Pick, pick, up, up, after your do- pick, pick up, up after your girlfriend! <laughs> <laughs> the worst part about having a dog for a partner is you gotta bring shit bags everywhere you go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You get a lot of hate. This person is just absolutely mental, like out of their mind. What you can't see is that on the, and you can go to youtube.com slash the commercial break. What you can't see is on the bottom, they are showing comments that I assume are coming from social media. And one of them said, this should be illegal. You should be ashamed of yourself. I totally disagree with that. I We'd agree, like to have fun yeah. with this, but well, who the hell are you? Who the hell is she harming? Honestly, at the end of the day, who is she bothering? No, she's an adult woman. Yeah. And if she's not shitting on your lawn, as long as he picks up it after her, I'm cool with this. Exactly. When we're in public, it can be a little bit embarrassing at times. <laughs> oh my God, Is they are going to the dog, dog park. park. <laughs> <laughs> she just walked in on all, all fours through the chain link gate oh, to the dog park. Oh, Chrissy. I, yeah. I think my tolerance for this might stop at the bedroom door. Do you know what I'm saying? I agree. Like if you want to pretend you're a puppy so we can do it doggy style <laughs> yes. and truly be in doggy style... I get that. Yeah. Ten four. Understood. <laughs> I don't mind. Gra- I don't mind being on all fours or someone else being on all fours. But going Good to the dog, dog park, park. <laughs> in the middle of the day is worse to me than chasing a pigeon down the road at three in the morning. Just say it. I met Jenna at a photo shoot last year. We sort of clicked almost right away on set. After they met, there was one thing that Jenna had to make sure Lorenzo was on board with. So we met at a <laughs> we met at a photo shoot for Puppy Chow. <laughs> she was a dog. Commercial. I was the stylist, and she was the dog, the actual dog. She was a she's a stunt doggy, stunt doggy dog. <laughs> Started first pretending that I was a puppy when I was really really little. I would ask my mom to play with the dogs with me, so I would just be one of the dogs. 
And my God, I hope my daughter doesn't end up being Stitch when she grows up. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Parents always asked when I was going to grow out of it, (laughs) but um, I never did. Jenna lives a puppy lifestyle and had to make sure Lorenzo would be the right owner for all her puppy needs. <laughs> she's at when the, I first so she's at the kitchen counter while he's eating a sandwich, and she's begging at, for food. She's begging for food. Yeah, looking, please. I already please. like this dog better than I like, <laughs> like Blue. Blue. Yeah, by the way, just she, just saying that she's much quieter. <laughs> seems much more well behaved. <laughs> Told him about this. He didn't shy away at all. He just was like, "Okay, cool." Like. So what do I need to do? Okay, cool. We still have sex? Yeah, right. Cool. Yeah. See. All right. Yeah. Move in. Yeah. Bring all Get your doggy your stuff and move in. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh. <laughs> Bring all your doggy stuff and move in. Cool. You want to go to PetSmart and then get fucked? <laughs> yeah. All right. Sweet. <laughs> Cool, bro. She's got a service, service dog. dog. Don't vest. touch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You don't want strange men petting her belly. <laughs> So puppy play really was something that I've learned a lot of from Jenna. Some of her needs and feelings uh, are very similar, you know, to, to having a puppy, which I've never personally have have had. But uh, you know, it's something that I feel that I personally love embracing. The dog you never had. Yeah, the dog. <laughs> My parents never let me have a puppy, so I got a girlfriend. That's perfect. Who is a puppy? It, it all worked out. It's serendipitous. You know what I'm saying? He he is uh he's a better man than I. I again think I could take it inside the house, maybe for a while. Outside. But I'd, I'd want to have a non puppy conversation every once in a blue moon. Yeah. Oh, this could be Or good. eat a sandwich with the other person at the table. Yeah, I'd like to have yeah. you at the table. Could you get up off the floor? Thanks very much. <laughs> I don't want to throw my <laughs> scraps of food to my wife <laughs> in order to keep her alive and healthy. Do you take her to the vet? What it goes on there? <laughs> it's so strange. But again, let me reiterate. Who fucking cares? God yeah. bless you. I think I'd have a I think I'd be a little bit jarring to see this out in public. Yeah. Yeah, like especially as I never have. No. You've never seen a human yeah. being acting like a dog out in <laughs> public at the, at the dog, dog park? park? Yeah. No. I think I'd have to protect my dogs <laughs> in that situation. And be like, close your eyes, we're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> this is asinine. Puppy play is extremely important in my relationship. That's where a lot of like my my love languages lie. Um, I it's very important to get a lot of praise, a lot of, you know, good job, you're doing great, you know, good girls. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was holding it together until she just I know. panted and barked. <laughs> <laughs> My kids yeah. do this. My children do this, and they don't do it for more than a minute, and then they're like, ah, it hurts my knees. I don't like barking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got to speak English now. Oh, man. Wow. I wonder if she does this 20... She she can't do this 24 hours a day. Like, you have to go to the bathroom and get dressed and take a shower and stuff, right? Yes. Okay. Just checking. I'm asking you. I'm asking you, like, you know... (laughs) Well, she looks too beautiful to... Oh, she's a beautiful woman. Not to not shower or change clothes. No, she's a beautiful woman. I'm a little confused by the Chanel wallpaper they have going on. You notice that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is up with that? I don't know. They've got like a Victorian picture over there. Yeah. And then I noticed they had like a, like someone put uh, graffiti on their, are they on their squatting? wall. squatting? Probably. <laughs> yep. That's what, probably. That's what rabid dogs yeah. do. Well, it's hard to find a place that accepts pets. <laughs> 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 you got to pay that pet deposit in the whole nine yards. I mean. What landlord wants to deal with it, honestly? <laughs> when you say I have a dog, it takes out half the places you really want. I like about being a dog is the bond between like that one special person, like your owner. And yeah, like the day to day like mannerisms of a dog <laughs> that they have, you know. I like to be oh! very carefree. She's digging a hole in the yard. Hey, Beatrice! <laughs> That fucking neighbor's out there digging in the yard again. Tell that guy to keep his dog on a leash. God damn it. She got great tits, though, doesn't she? <laughs> She's digging a hole She's in the yard. A hole in the yard, yeah. Oh, man. I like not 
having, you know, a choice because it makes life so much easier. Wait, you like being a dog so you don't have to make decisions? Mm. Uh, there might be a therapist out there yeah, that specializes yeah, in yes. dogs. <laughs> I've had a dog therapist for Blue. <laughs> Didn't do any good. <laughs> Not a fucking bit of good. <laughs> Except I'm sure that I get, that guy got a really nice vacation that month. The amount of money that we paid him. A dog therapist. What a ridiculous notion. <laughs> I, I heard he was good. I heard yeah. he works wonders on other dogs. <laughs> This is probably where I feel the safest at home. Um, it's kind she of she has an actual crate. She does with the dog bed and look at little toys. And now, then... okay, now there are some things about this that I think could be a benefit. Like you know, sometimes you just get upset with your partner and you don't want them sleeping in the same bed with you. I just say, go to your box. Okay. Go to your box. <laughs> go to your crate. <laughs> Mama needs to go in the hut. Go to your hut. Go to your hut. I call it the box. <laughs> And when you say, do you want to go in the box to blue, it shuts her up yep. for exactly three seconds <laughs> before she realizes that if you put me in the box, I will then bark more and you will be more upset. <laughs> so we both know, Brian, you're not going to do that. So for a second, you had me. But then I realized as your shitty dog, just how much control I have over you, even though I only speak one language. And one word of that language. <laughs> ah! I know that with that one word, I can control the entire household. <laughs> so you want to say it again? You want to you want make more empty promises? More empty threats? Like my den. It's like my den that I can retire to and know that I'm safe and, you know, no one can get me. The first time I saw the cage, I was, um... <laughs> I was, uh, super turned on. <laughs> I thought, can I get my penis in there and fuck you in the cage? Because, let's be honest, we haven't had many conversations. You just keep barking at me, but I like having sex with you. <laughs> I think this is easy for both of them. He makes all the decisions. She acts yeah. like a dog. Yeah. Yeah. It just feels like a uh, relationship of convenience. I was sort of uh, shocked. I mean, it was, it was a lot bigger <laughs> than I thought. But once it was set up, and I saw you expected her to stay in a smaller crate. You wanted her in something uncomfortable. <laughs> it's a lot bigger than I thought. Do you, uh, who has a picture in their head of the dog crate for people that act like dogs? Who's running around going, huh, that's bigger than I thought a dog crate for people who act like dogs would be. <laughs> they don't sell those. I guess at it'll fit in this corner. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. You mind if I put you in the guest room? It's kind of taking up a lot of space. It's how happy she was and comfortable. She she really looks good and happy, and uh, I, I think it makes her a great addition to the room. You think it makes a good addition to the room? Make, she makes a great addition to the room. Well, how kind of you. <laughs> Showing their puppy love on social media has led to people questioning their roles in the relationship. Some of the most negative comments, it's probably just people saying that I'm crazy. <laughs> This person is just absolutely mental, like out of their mind. That person said, I hate this couple, couple as, as much as, as I, I hate the, the Trumps. Trumps. <laughs> <laughs> Why is politics ruined everything? <laughs> now we can't have fun with the girl who has a dog because of the Trumps. <laughs> Fucking Trumps. I'm sorry for your parents. This should be considered illegal. I'm bleaching out my eyes. Are you I'm okay? I'm scared. Are you okay? This ain't right. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> well, listen. I don't think she's crazy. She seems like she's got her facilities together. It seems like there may be some kind of past trauma involved where she doesn't feel safe, and that's why she needs to be in the box. Yeah, I would say that there's safe. something has triggered this yeah. I'd like to be a dog thing, you know, <laughs> and that's for her and her therapist to work out. From a fetish standpoint, I don't think there's any problem with this. No. Again, it's I think it's the outside in the world that... Now, I don't have a problem with you. Like, it's not for me to judge whether or not you want to walk around on all fours. That's cool. But I can see how it would be problematic for them to be outside and her on a leash. Like, yeah. is she okay? Is right. he hurting her? Is she insane? What kind of dog is that? Because <laughs> I'd like here? one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, People. What kind of dog? Look how yeah. cute. That's a. What kind of dog is that? <laughs> special breed. That's a special breed. It's a cross breed of a buxom blonde. That's what we call it, buxom blonde. Said like, 
you know, are you being held against your will? Is he forcing you to do this? Like blink twice if you're okay. I know myself that I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not- you know what I think disturbs me the most about this? <laughs> what these pictures, they're showing pictures of her out in public and it's a staged yeah. photograph, obviously. Yeah. And yeah, he's yeah. holding the choker the chain and every picture, she is right next to his dick yes. with her head. Exactly. That's what's most disturbing about this to me is that it seems highly sexualized, like hypersexualized. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And are they at, tra- time, are they at Times Square They're there and Times she's Square. barefoot? That's not happening. I would never do that. <laughs> You wouldn't catch me. Put yeah. some puppy booties That's on. Right. That's right. Just... <laughs> Don't you have like, can't you go to the costume store and get like some Paw Patrol, extra Paw Patrol shoes? Well, I, I'm just kind of living my life out on the internet. And with that comes a lot of judgment. I try to comfort her and let her know that there may be. Nothing like a living li- your life on the internet. Yeah, nothing like living like your li- life on the internet or a podcast. We know, we get it. It's the same shit. Everyone's got their own opinions and they're all... Opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got them and they all stink. I'm just letting you know. I don't take anything too seriously. Not the good stuff and not the bad stuff. You got to really kind of block block that out. You got to cock block that out. But I will say this. um, (laughs) (laughs) Is this... I think they're showing a picture of like them out with their friends at at the the, beach at the river. Yeah, the river. you know, shooting the hooch, something like that. And she's... She's down on. She's down on all fours, yeah. right next to his dick. Yep, yep. Minority of people that. Oh, hold on one second. They they're wearing masks. This is obviously during the time of COVID. They're wearing masks, and the mask says "I eat ass." What? That's what it says. I eat ass. I think Isn't that it what it does says? Say that. It says ass. Oh. It says hey, ass. Ann. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> Their masks both say, I eat ass. They have pulled one big scam on the producers of this reality show. If this reality show even cared to check into it. I think this is a, I think this is a joke. Yeah. Feel a certain negative way about you, but you still have me that do care about you and love what you do. We're going to go to the park and I'm thinking we'll get some usual shots of you walking on a leash, take some videos, some photos. Mm -hmm. But what if we throw a Frisbee? And you catch it. In my mouth. What if you, what if I throw a Frisbee directly at your face and you catch it? (laughs) And don't worry, I've got really good dental insurance. I don't want you to worry about losing any teeth. (laughs) Throwing a Frisbee and you catch it with your mouth? Are you crazy? Have you ever been hit in the face by a Frisbee? That fucking hurts. It does hurt. Yeah. They're doing this for Patreon. Yeah. In your mouth. I think we've been hoodwinked by these people. I I don't think this really happens off camera. Right. And if you catch it in your mouth, you know what you get, right? Do I get a treat? Yes. I get a treat? Only you get get my dick. (laughs) (laughs) You get these nuts and that mouth. What do you think, girl? (laughs) Get on all fours. Oh, you're already on all fours. (laughs) Here I come. You ready to go? Yes. All right. I'm ready. Sit. Sit. Good. Now, in the back... On their Chanel wallpaper, there is graffiti. And that graffiti says Nerdball TV. We must follow up on Nerdball TV. Nerdball, let me write it in the notebook. Yes, I'm about to uncover the scam that is Nerd this ball. dog play here. Yes. Nerdball TV. The party. Yes, I'm ready. Let's go. Oh my God, there's like other dogs that are coming up to the car and sniffing her ass. Like, this is crazy. This is crazy. That dog so ran off. I know that dog. A dog, they're at the dog park and the dog ran off to go give her a kiss on the mouth and she, then he ran off. He's like, crazy bitch. <laughs> oh my oh God. My God. Wow. And check out this bitch. Oops. Sorry, I put on the wrong voice. <laughs> Forget it. Dog Park is obviously one of my favorite things. When we're in public, I can see how it can be a little bit embarrassing at times. There's weirder things out there, like a girl pretending to be a dog isn't really the weirdest thing. I think. Uh, <laughs> hold on one second. It's not the, it's not weirdest, the weirdest thing, thing but. <laughs> 
it does rank pretty highly it up is, there when yeah. you're taking your girlfriend to the dog park as a dog on a leash, on throwing, a leash. throwing the ball on a frisbee. Yeah, taking pictures for your Patreon or whatever <laughs> you're doing. And God bless you. If you're honestly, I bet there's like, I bet that you make a good living. Probably. We are doing this wrong, Chrissy. I think. Well, I was going to say you, but it's probably me that should <laughs> act like a dog the entire show, yeah. and then we'll get people to pay us because they're dog fetishers. I'll get on top of the table. I'll be on all fours. <laughs> you can take me out on a walk. We'll put it on video. What do you think? This is too much work. Yeah. It's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> We've made 7,000 hours of this fucking show. <laughs> it's too much work to take me out on a walk. I feel disappointed. <laughs> you don't support me the way I need to be supported. You don't care. <laughs> Just for a lot of people, it's it's new to see it in the way that she does it. I don't find it weird. I would say Lorenz is the best owner that I could ever ask for. <laughs> she cares for me. I feel like the luckiest pup at the shelter. I mean, there's I something definitely it. very sexual about this whole thing. Yeah, well, it's she's definitely... She's a fan shaking her ass. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, she's a buxom blonde yeah. shaking her ass all over the place. How can you not get turned Add on by it? Dick. Yeah, honestly, I'm turned on by it, and I'm not into dog play. But all of a sudden, I'm finding myself into dog play. Puppy play. <laughs> puppy play. <laughs> not with real puppies, but, you know, beautiful blonde puppies. <laughs> Next time we get a dog and Aston tries to convince me to get a Yorkie, I'm going to go, I want a blonde puppy <laughs> with long hair, big boobs, and a nice ass. That's what I want. <laughs> Someone that can wipe their own ass. You know what I'm saying? I like this idea. I like this idea. Okay, I'm getting with it. I'm hip to it. I'm hip to it. Yeah. Yeah. Attention when she needs it, make her feel safe, and just overall see her happy and playful. Wow. Well, there you go. There you have it. Wow. You have a whole new addition to our uh, string of <laughs> animal-related sexual activities. <laughs> God. I thought about it the other day. We've talked about ghost fucking, dragon fucking, dolphin fucking, now pigeon fucking, dog fucking. I mean, we have run the gamut. We are. We're covering. Of animals. Base is covered. Mythological and otherwise. We've got it oh, That's all right. Covered. That time, that one time he did the mythological porn. I did. <laughs> I found a website where people write mythological <laughs> porn. It's, there's no pictures. It's just all writing. And we read a couple of them out loud. It was so disturbing that we have not gone back to that no, well. No. <laughs> when someone was talking about, you know, the dragon raping them, I was like, oh. I don't know. Someone actually wrote me about that episode and said that it was a trigger for them because the dragon was in the fantasy that this girl had written yeah. that she was having non-consensual sex with the dragon. The dragon was non-consensual. So I'll never forget that my first, like, the first email I ever really took seriously was a young lady that wrote me in and said that was triggering. I didn't expect the non-consensual part of that. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to let you know that you may want to put a warning on that particular episode. That's right. So, we're not going to go there anymore. No more non-consensual <laughs> dragon <laughs> sex <laughs> episodes. Yeah. <laughs> it's all going to be consensual from now on. When someone's having a mythological, uh, you know, sex wet party. dream. That's right. We're going to make sure it's all consensual. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chrissy, let's excuse me. I got to go outside and find a red robin I can... <laughs> Whack off to. Odd. Hey, Blue, I'm seeing you in a whole new light, sunshine. <laughs> I'm thinking about keeping you around for an extra couple of days. I'm going to get with Astrid and see if we can get this done. Oh, yeah, get with Astrid on this one. A thruple where one of them is a dog. Yeah, Astrid this, would... This I, is I'm the, excited to see what Astrid says. Astrid's going to love it. She <laughs> loves my wise ideas. Hey, babe, I want to bring another... Thing into the bedroom, but not a woman, a dog woman. Yeah, it's not, it's not puppy a, play. Yeah, it's not it's a, beautiful blonde. Yeah, it's not a threat she's to you. Not, it's she's a dog. She's a dog. It's a dog. I just have don't sex. Don't be threatened with her. by a dog. Yeah, don't be threatened by a dog. We're just bringing another <laughs> dog into the bedroom. We already have Blue. Why not this woman? <laughs> TCVpodcast.com. That's where you go to find out more information about Chrissy and I. You can listen to all the audio, you can watch all the video, or you could get your 21 EPM sticker like we've been talking about all episode. We would love to send it to you. Go to TCBpodcast.com. 
hit the contact us button, send us your physical address, tell us you want the sticker, and away it goes. Also, 1-855-TCB-8383. 1-855-TCB-8383. Toll free, anywhere in the world. We'll pick up the charges. Comments, questions, concerns, content ideas, we take them all at 855-TCB-8383. Also, we have a bit of a TikTok channel going on now. So go to TikTok, dial up TCB Podcast, and there we are. And uh, we're starting to post every day on TikTok. Who knew that our audience would be on TikTok? Everybody's on TikTok. It's mostly people over 70 following us, but whatever. I'll take it. (laughs) At the commercial break on Instagram. And fully edited episodes every single time they air here on the audio feed, youtube.com slash the commercial break. Hi, right, Chrissy. I guess that's all we can do today. I think so. So I'll tell you that I love you. I love you. Best to you. And best to you. And best to you out there in the podcast universe. Until next time, Chrissy and I always say we do say and we must say. Good goodbye. Goodbye.